What's up everyone for the win Itachi here, you know what it is, back at it again for Battle for Azeroth. First couple of patches here and not too much has changed and we are here with the Affliction Warlock Guide. For those of you already interested in checking out our Destruction and Demonology Guide, please go ahead and check out our World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth playlist on the YouTube channel of youtube.com slash for the win Itachi plays where you can find both of those guys already completed and good to go. And here we're going to be covering over stats, gems and chants and consumables, the rotation of course as well as talents. So without further ado, let's get to it. So with the stat priority for an Affliction Warlock, as most Warlocks you're going to go on to go with Intellect as your first stat. You're going to want to stack as much mastery as possible because that is going to be giving you the biggest DPS increase compared to the remaining stat priorities. Uh, you're going to want to go after um, mastery haste, then crit, followed by lastly versatility. So again, that will be intellect over mastery, over haste, over crit, over versatility. So without further ado, let's get into gems and chance and consumables. So the main gem that you're going to want to go ahead and equip into any given slot is the Kraken Eye of Intellect. Um, you can only have one and this is a unique equipped gem. So make sure you get one of your um, items to have a gem slot that has that gem. And the rest of the gems you're going to want to go ahead and stack Masterful Tidal Amethyst, which is basically pure straight up mastery. Next up for enchants, you're going to want to enchant your ring with Pact of Mastery, which is a straight up mastery enchant. Um, enchant weapon will be Masterful Navigation, which you could probably guess is more mastery. Uh, for your potion, you're going to want to go with Battle Potion of Intellect. Uh, for your Flask of Choice, it's going to be Flask of Endless Fathoms. Uh, for your Fruit of Choice, it's Bountiful Captain's Feast, if you have that available. Otherwise, make sure you have in your bags the Sailor's Pie, which is for mastery. And last but not least, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you have yourself handy. Um, you can get these from LFRs or the Auction House. You can go ahead and purchase them from other people. The Battle Scarred Augment Rune, which is for intellect um, bonus for uh, a Warlock. So without further ado, next up, we're going to go ahead and jump into the talents for both PvP and PvE. Now let's go ahead and get into the talents for both PvP and PvE. Um, basically it's pretty much straightforward unlike the other two specs especially demonology which was not straightforward um, but affliction is very very straightforward and not too much wiggle room with um, a lot of these tiers so without further ado tier one we have nightfall which is a passive ability corruption damage has a chance to cause your next shadow bolt to be instant and deal 25 percent increased damage next up drain soul replaces shadow bolt 1000 mana per second channeled drains the target soul causing about 6k shadow damage over 4.4 seconds damage is increased by 100 percent against enemies below 20 percent health generates one soul shard if the target uh, dies during the effect um, next up, you got Death Bolt. Launches a bolt of death at the target, dealing 30% of the total remaining damage of the damage over time effects on the target. Now, with Tier 1 for both PvP and PvE, the only choice that I recommend is Death Bolt. It is a DPS increase and it is a nice, handy cooldown to have, especially in PvP situations where you can kind of get like a one shot or you really, really need that insta damage to go ahead and uh, get that kill off, especially for PvP. And then for PvE, it is just simply a DPS increase compared to the other two talent choices. Tier 2, we've got Rift of Agony. Um, Agony's damage may now ramp up to 15 stacks. We also have Absolute Corruption. Corruption is now permanent and deals 15% increased damage. Duration reduced by 24 seconds against players. And then Siphon Life. Uh, siphons the target's life essence, dealing about 8k shadow damage over 12.8 seconds and healing you for 30% of the damage done. Now for tier 2, again this is also a pretty much dead lock situation. For PvP, Siphon Life is just a give and go. Uh, you want that health, and uh, you want that health, 30% um, of the health uh, being dealt for, for you. And also, uh, the damage increase from Siphon Life compared to the other two, and of course you get the, the niche of the healing as well, uh, about 30% of the damage done. So make sure you go ahead and grab Siphon Life for Tier 2. Next up, we've got Tier 3, very very simple, flat around uh, on all specs of a, of a Warlock, a Demon Skin. Your Soul Leech Absorption now passively recharges at a rate of 0.5% of the maximum health every one second. It may now absorb up to 50% of the maximum health. 
Yeah, Burning Rush increases the movement speed uh, by 50%, but also damages you for 4% of your maximum health every one second. Movement impairing effects may not reduce you below 100% of normal movement speed, last until cancelled, and Dark Pack sacrifice 20% of your current health to shield you for 250% of that sacrificed health for 20 seconds. Usable while suffering from control impairing effects. Um, I recommend Demon Skin to be your default talent here. However, Burning Rush does come into play in PvE situations. I don't recommend Burning Rush for PvP at all. Uh, but for PvE situations, Burning Rush is definitely uh, useful depending on uh, the mechanics, depending on the boss that you are fighting. Sometimes you need to go ahead and get from distance A to distance B or point A to point B rather quickly that's when burning rush is definitely going to come in handy and also let's just say you're just someone that likes to sit in things and wait till the last second you might want to be able to pop burning rush and get yourself out of there however thinking about that if you wait till the last second you probably already fucked yourself by re ruining your health so burning rush is definitely not going to come in handy but i do recommend burning rush in some pve situations but otherwise your default talent for tier 3 should be demon skin so for tier 4 we got so of seed Seed of Corruption now embeds a Demon Seed into uh, one additional nearby enemy. Phantom Singularity uh, places a Phantom Singularity above the target, which consumes the life of all enemies within 15 yards, dealing about 17,000 damage over 14.2 seconds, healing you for 25% of that damage done, and Vile Taint unleashes a Vile Explosion at the uh, target location, dealing about 12k shadow damage over 10 seconds to all enemies within 10 yards and reducing their movement speed by 30%. Um, the default talent for this for me is Phantom Singularity, mainly because of the DPS increase over Vile Taint. Um, so of Seeds is a nice AoE, however Phantom Singularity uh, does outbeat that as well. And then Phantom Singularity is really really nice because it also gives you 25% healing to you of the damage done in both PvE and PvP situations that is a definite positive. However, I mean, I can see some fights and PvE situations where Vile Tank comes into play, especially with the 30% reduced movement speed. But we have Shadow Fury and other mechanics that we can, uh, and other abilities and mechanics that we can uh, basically utilize for our advantage to go ahead and use that. So I do suggest still going with Phantom Singularity due to the uh, DPS increase. Tier 5, we've got Dark Fury, reduces the cooldown of Shadow Fury by 15 seconds, Mortal Coil horrifies the enemy target into fleeing, incapacating them for 3 seconds and healing you for 20% of the maximum health, and Demonic Circle basically summons a Demonic Circle for 15 seconds, cast Demonic Circle teleport to teleport to its location and remove all movement slowing effects, and Demonic Circle teleport, which is another ability you learn, teleports you to the Demonic Circle and removes all movement slowing effects. Um, basically, this is universal depending on your own playstyle. Uh, Dark Fury is a nice stun. I mean, it reduces the stun of Shadow Fury by 15 seconds, which is really, really nice in PvE situations where you need to crowd control mobs and uh, adds. And if you need to do that rather quickly, uh, reducing the cooldown of Shadow Fury is definite positive. Uh, Mortal Coil is very, very nice for duels, for PvP situations, and also PvE situations where you're just a complete bum and need to heal yourself. Uh, so Mortal Coil does come into handy there. However, the default talent of choice in this tier is Demonic Circle because it comes in handy in all given situations where you can preset yourself up in a PvE situation. It can mac maximize your DPS. It's actually a DPS increase, um, being able to not have to move yourself um, around the room because sometimes I mean for affliction I mean you have dots so being able to move in DPS isn't too difficult but for the other specs sometimes you can't move in some situations so demonic circle does come into play really really nicely if you need to get to a specific spot and it's also a way to run away in PvP to make sure your dots are dealing the damage while you are keeping away from the melee class so I do suggest demonic circle coming into play for tier 5. Next up tier 6 Shadow Embrace. Shadow Bolt applies Shadow Embrace, increasing your damage dealt to the target by 3% for 10 seconds, stacking up to 3 times, which totals 9%. Haunt, a ghostly soul, haunts the target, dealing 4k shadow damage, and increases your damage dealt to the target by 10% for 15 seconds. If the target dies, Haunt's cooldown is reset. Grimoire of Sacrifice. Sacrifice your demon pet uh, for power, gaining its command demon ability, and causing your spells to sometimes deal 2,740 damage, additional shadow damage. The last one hour, Ontori summon a pet. Haunt is the given choice for both PvE and PvP. The reason being is Haunt is a huge, vast DPS increase 
over Shadow Embrace, and I don't mind controlling my pet to do its bidding, or to do my bidding, for, for, for if I say it that way. And Hunt is just the best for DPS increase in this whole tier, so I really suggest for both PvP and PvE to select Hunt. Last but not least is the final tier, tier 7. We've got Soul Conduit. Every Soul Shard you spend has a 15% chance to be refunded. Creeping Death, your Agony, Corruption, Siphon, Life, and Unstable Affliction deal their full damage 15% faster. Dark Soul Misery, infuse your soul with the misery of the fallen foes, increasing haste by 30% for 20 seconds. Creeping Death might sound a little bit confusing to most people, however, PvP, it is, it, it, it's God Mode. I really suggest going Creeping Death for, uh, for PvP situations as an Affliction Warlock. And for PvE, it is actually uh, DPS increase uh, compared to the other two. So it is very, very uh, simple choice on tier 7 to just go with Creeping Death. Overall, I strongly suggest for a quick recap for both PvE and PvP for tier 1 to choose Death Bolt, for tier 2 to choose Siphon Life, for tier 3 to choose Demon Skin unless you're in a PvE situation which requires Burning Rush, for tier 4 Phantom Singularity, uh, for tier 5, I suggest uh, overall Demonic Circle, however the other two do come into play. For tier 6, Haunt, and for tier 7, uh, Creeping Death. Now let's move on to the PvP talents. PvP talents, uh, for your Honorable Medallion, I strongly suggest Gladiator's Medallion. It is a ability where you actually have full control over. There's the other two, which is Adaptation, and of course Relentless. I'm not a huge fan of them. Now the main reason is Gladiator's Medallion, you have control over which CC you are going to remove. Let's say you're in a situation where you are CC'd, however you're not going to take any damage, they CC'd you, they're kind of they're kind of lost, I don't know, they don't have any cooldowns, they're not really going to deal that much damage to you, or you already have a defensive on you and you're not taking damage. <clears throat> you might not want to get out of that CC, so uh, you might just want to sit in it. So the other two are just not the best of uh, choices for there, so I really strongly suggest going Gladiator's Medallion if you're okay with um, being able to think about your CC removals and stuff like that. Next up, we've got Curse of Tongues, which uh, forces the target to speak demonic, increasing casting time of all spells by 30% for 10 seconds. Curse of Weakness reduces the target's physical damage dealt by 25% for 10 seconds. Curse of Fragility reduces the target's maximum health by up to 15% for 10 seconds. Endless Affliction, your Unstable Affliction deals the same damage as normal, but its duration is increased by 6 seconds. Soul Shatter, consume all of the damage over time effects on the, uh, the 5 nearest enemies within 40 yards, dealing up to 10% of the maximum health in Shatter damage. For each enemy hit by Soul Shatter, you gain 1 Soul Shard and 10% haste for 8 seconds. This is a god mode talent in this PvP section, so I strongly suggest one of the three is definitely Soul Shatter. Demonic ma uh, gate Gateway Mastery sorry, uh, increases the range of your Demonic Gate Gateway by 20 yards and reduces the cast time by 30%, reduces the time between how often players can use your or take your uh, Demonic Gateway by 15 seconds. Curse of Shadows is back in action. Magical damage over time effects will strike the target an additional time for 20% of their damage as Shadow lasts 10 seconds. Nether Ward surrounds the caster with a shield that lasts 3 seconds, reflecting all harmful spells cast on you. And of course, uh, Casting Circle uh, summons a Casting Circle for 8 seconds while within the Casting Circle, you are immune to silence and interrupt effects. Learning Casting Circle causes unending resolve to no longer grant immunity to silence and interrupting effects. Don't really like it. I chose for the other two, Rotten Decay, each time your Drain Life deals damage, it increases the duration of your Unstable Affliction, Corruption, and Agony on the target by 1 second. Also, Essence Drain, whenever you heal yourself with Drain Life, the enemy target deals 5% reduced damage to you for 6 seconds, stacking up to 5 times. I actually like to use Drain Life in PvP situations as my filler rather than Shadow Bolt, which is why I ended up buffing Drain Life with both Rotten Decay and Essence Drain. So overall, my PvP looks like this. Gladiator's Medallion, Soul Shatter, Essence Drain, Rotten Decay. Now without further ado, let's get to the rotation. Alright everybody, so for single target for an Affliction Warlock, it is almost identical to uh, the AoE rotation. 
Um, for your talents of choice, I suggest you go with Death Bolt, Siphon Life, Demon Skin, Phantom Singularity, uh, Demonic Circle Haunt, and Creeping Death. I'm not going to be going over or incorporating any of the PvP talents. I won't be going over or incorporating any of the defensive abilities, such as uh, Drain Life, and any Resolve, uh, and Health Stone. I will not be incorporating things like the Medallion or the or my uh, Racials. I won't be incorporating... Um, potions flasks we're just going to go with the bare basics of the single target rotation and what you guys need to know on how to play an affliction warlock so first up we've got our dots which are damage over time abilities we've got agony corruption siphon life as well as unstable affliction um the first three agony corruption and uh siphon life you want to keep up at all given times and uh, Unstable Affliction, that's where you're going to be spending your Soul Shards into and you want to keep that up as all given times as well. However, you're just going to be basically spending your Soul Shards on Unstable Affliction. Uh, your filler is going to be Shadow Bolt. While on cooldown, you want to go ahead and use Haunt as well as Death Bolt. And also, once you have all your dots up as well, you're going to want to go ahead and use Summon Dark Glare, which I will go ahead and use as well. You also have another dot that you can use in a single target rotation, which is Phantom Singularity, which is a 45 second cooldown, which you want to use on every single cooldown as well. So without further ado, let me show you how this works. So, we gotta keep Agony on the boss at all times, Corruption on the boss at all times, Siphon Life on the boss at all times. Use all your soul shards on Unstable Affliction. You can stack that up onto the boss um, as many times as you want, up to five. You wanna go ahead and use Haunt on cooldown, death bolt on cooldown, and of course, when you have all of your dots up, summon dark glare. It's a very, very easy rotation, and again, you can multi-dot, which is basically multitasking, doing the exact same thing onto all other given targets within your area. So, that's pretty much it, and of course, phantom singularity on cooldown, which I kind of forgot about, but that's pretty much it. So now let's get into the AoE rotation. Alrighty, so now let's go ahead and get into the AoE rotation for an affliction more like it is very very easy and straightforward it is pretty much your single target spec because you don't really have to change any of your talents and it is pretty much your single target rotation as well by keeping your dots up on the target and it's basically weaving in uh instead of unstable affliction you can kind of switch that out and start using seed of corruption now uh you want to multicast seed of corruption on multiple targets because the seed will detonate early if it is hit by another detonation so you want a bunch of explosions happening of course and um, of course uh, also spread your dots upon all of the targets as well because the seeds do detonate after they take about 3k damage so really really simple here you're gonna go ahead and go to these guys you're gonna want to go ahead and uh, dot up all the targets with your main three dots which is uh, agony corruption and siphon life they'll be taking a ton of damage from all of your dots here Again, you're not going to want to use your soul shards on unstable affliction. Uh, you want to go ahead and use haunt on cooldown. You want to use uh, your dark glare on cooldown. Your uh, demon bolt or death bolt on cooldown. Phantom singularity on cooldown. And pretty much weave in uh, seed of corruption on all the targets while making sure you have all of your dots up on the target as well. Now, it's kind of hard to do this by talking. But uh, it's not that difficult of a, of a weave to do. Just basically multicast or multi-dot and uh, basically use your single target rotation but switch out unstable affliction for uh, seed of corruption on your soul shard spending and again use your cooldowns of haunt death bolt dark glare as well as phantom singularity and of course spam uh, seed of corruption on all targets you most likely will never use shadow bolt and you definitely will not be using unstable affliction whatsoever Alrighty, everybody, thank you all very much for tuning in to another guide brought to you by Feather Wind Attachee. Uh, catch you guys around, post down below if you got questions, or if you guys got any suggestions on some future videos for us to do, go ahead and post down below as well. Check out that description box. Have a wonderful day.